what are straight white men good for? Straight white men? Yeah. Not a lot. <laughs> We're back here. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Hi, my name is Sydney. Welcome back to hell. And as per usual, before we launch in, today's video is sponsored by Exter. I am going to be chaotic today. I am feeling the chaos. Now, this is one of those topics that I've really wanted to cover for quite a long time, but as with many of the complicated, nuanced topics that we get into on this channel, I have had a hard time articulating my thoughts. That was, of course, until I stumbled across a YouTube video recently titled Asking Britons, Are Straight White Men the problem. Also, if you are new to planet Earth, a Briton is a person from Britain, all of whom may or may not sound like Russell Brand. What is Spain really? It's only something someone made up. Or the crumpling of a chip packet. I'm kidding, obviously. English accents are adorable. Don't yell at me in the comments. The video in question is a young woman named Jess asking a series of people, most of whom are white, about what straight white men are good for if straight white men are important, and if they occupy too many roles in government and so on. And the answers are about what you'd expect. What are straight white men good for? Straight white men? Yeah. Not a lot. I would bet all of the things I have owned and will own that this woman is married to a straight white man. Do you think straight white men are important? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're utter fucking trash. <laughs> I wonder, is it that the Irish hate straight white men or just themselves? Ooh, I am on one today. Sometimes I like like how rational sometimes they might be like really straightforward, like uh, even about feelings, they are more like practical sometimes. I have to assume this man is not a heterosexual, which leads me to ask, are the gays not practical? What are straight white men good for? Uh being rude and um, making you feel uncomfortable. Are straight white men important? I mean, they think they're very important. Um, you know, they're just as important as everyone else, but I do, sometimes I get a bit inflated sense of <laughs> self. Do you think they're important? No. So what would you say they're good for? Um, I, I mean, they've got value, obviously, but the problem is that it's, it's been them exclusively, so they're, they're, they're good at things, but just not everything all the time. Groundbreaking. Do you think they're good for in society? <laughs> if they give them their bank card, that's pretty good. <laughs> so, let me get this straight. So they're utter trash unless they're giving you their bank card. Okay. Don't expect any thoughtful feedback from me about this because I just, I hate all these people. While this video is only a few minutes long, it does demonstrate to us some very interesting things about the state of this conversation. It also served to remind me that while almost every group in society experiences criticism and ridicule in one form or another, some of that same criticism and ridicule directed towards some groups of people is more socially acceptable than others. In recent years, there really does appear to have been a ramping up in negative commentary not only about the white population, but about straight white males generally. You're all bad. We've gotten to a point where it's almost normal to casually mock and degrade this group without anybody even raising an eyebrow. And it rolls me around to the question of why is this okay and how did we get here? So that is what I want to discuss today, the demonization of straight white men. But before you once again board my hell gondola and we become even closer as the best friends that anybody could ever have through the constant torment that is modern society. Let's hear from today's sponsor, Exter Wallets. Important things go in a case. A skull for your brain, a pocket for your phone, a wallet for your money. Unless, of course, your wallet looks like this, in which case you might be a psychopath. But fear no more. You do not have to become Hannibal Lecter. You can modernize your life and get yourself 
an extra wallet. Extra makes a range of smart wallets that come in a range of different materials and colors. They have premium leather wallets, aluminium wallets, which are all slim for storage and make accessing your cards quite literally as easy as pushing a button. But even better than that, Extra now has so many other goodies like cash clips, key trackers, and even this handy little tracker card. You just chuck it in the sun, charge it up, put it in your wallet, and if you're a person who's like, where is my wallet? I don't remember, my brain lost that information. Just give your wallet a ring. That's not a joke. There's an app that lets you ring your wallet and then gives you a map to it. Personally, I love Extra because I actually use these when I go out because bras are not places for money and handbags inhibit my dancing. So if you two want to stop being a psycho and get a better wallet, click the link in the description or head over to shop.extra.com slash sydneywatson or use code sydney at checkout for 25% off your order. Some of you might recall in the not too distant past, Joe Rogan finding himself in the news yet again for making a statement about straight white men. During a 2021 podcast episode, Rogan made the following comments. You can never be woke enough. That's the problem. It keeps going. It keeps right. going further and further and further down the line. And if you get to the point where you capitulate, where you agree to all these demands, it will eventually get to straight white men are not allowed to talk. Right. Because it's your privilege to express yourself when other people of color have been silenced throughout history. It, it will be, you're not allowed to go outside because so many people were imprisoned for so many years. I mean, I'm not joking. No, I, I know, I know. It, it really will get there. It's that crazy. You yeah. know, we just got to be nice to each other, man. The result was an onslaught of people both mocking and disagreeing. Some people pointed out that Rogan has one of the largest online platforms and that he himself is a straight white man. So... Let's just note the biggest irony first. Um, he said, soon white men might not be allowed to talk. He gets paid $100 million to talk for a living. He might get paid to talk more than anyone else in the country. I'm pretty sure that Joe is a white man. But the thoughts and commentary of other people denied his point altogether. They suggested that this group does not experience any kind of bias, discrimination, and isn't under attack in any capacity. Or in the very least, not in the same capacity as minorities in Western countries or other ethnic groups around the world. And while straight white men aren't the only people that have privilege, they have the most privilege out of everyone. They've had the freedom to navigate their way around the world without being marginalized for being a straight white man. So for this Joe Rogan to now victimize himself and say, I'm a straight white man, I feel oppressed. No, more time we're just calling you out on your bullshit. Very American thing to say. All being white today, not as easy as it used to be, acknowledges the power and privilege of being a white man. Mistake often made by mediocre American men is confusing oppression for opposition. Do you realize that white men make up 30% of the population but 65% of the elected officials? But we're oppressed. When were white men ever denied their right to vote or considered to be property or three-fifths of a purse? Statues have ever been built or torn down that celebrate the theft and murder of white men. Holidays do we celebrate in honor of the genocide of white men. What books have been banned that teach the history of white men's oppression? Let me put it to you like this. Mediocrity isn't celebrated, it looks like oppression. Mediocrity is questioned, it looks like opposition. Oh, and my whole point goes over your head? Well, you look like an American. Unsurprisingly, not much has changed in the two years since Rogan's comments. Plenty of people still hold the opinion that straight white men, or just white men really, are not being sidelined and don't face any kind of discrimination or marginalization. These views have become so commonplace and so widely expressed by politicians, media figures, writers, journalists, academics, TikTok weirdos, that it's essentially become socially acceptable to casually attack this group of people for characteristics over which they have absolutely no control. So we have to stop demonizing people and realize the biggest terror threat in this country is white men most of them radicalized right up to the right. And one other one, you sure. talked about prohibiting straight males. Straight, from straight white males. Straight, straight white, white males. males, yes. Uh, this is, I, I wrote about this in 2012. I think it's the only hope for democracy in America. And I will be leading a, a great movement to prohibit straight white males, who I believe supported Donald Trump by about 85%.
uh, from having exercising the franchise, and I think that will save our democracy. Just so you're all aware, this is a former TV CEO called Stephen Clifford saying that straight white men shouldn't vote for the betterment of society. Given that Stephen probably wants to retain his vote, and from what I can see is a white man, I am forced to conclude that he is in fact a homosexual. Feels kind of weird knowing that I'm old enough to remember a time when other groups of people couldn't vote, and this was considered sexist and racist. It's kind of funny. If anybody had said this now about any other group of people... Right to jail. Right away. This is almost as bad as the time that Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for him, you ain't black. And you ain't black. You know, something that occurred to me while I was collecting things for this video is that it might seem like some of these clips are cherry-picked. But actually, you don't have to look very hard or very far to find them. The ideas here are not being espoused by random weirdos on Twitter. Well, I mean, they are being espoused there too, but that's not the point I'm making. They're being expressed by pundits and news outlets and politicians with enormous influence and reach. And also the weirdos on Twitter. And you can't forget about TikTok. What is white male privilege? Muscling your way through a group of pedestrians while you're staring at your phone, while everyone else is waiting patiently for the light to change. You step into the street, Look at the cars, look at the light, look at the cars, look at the light. The second that that light turns yellow, you're gonna be the first person across the street because you're so important. So I'm out taking pictures and uh, you'll never guess what I found. It's honestly kind of rare to find. So if you look over here, it's a gaggle of straight white men, old straight white men. <gasps> Not to mention, these ideas are depicted in film and television. You got anything? <laughs> I'm kidding. Straight white men are cancelled. They're demonstrated in all sorts of media and entertainment. And to cap it all off, anything offered in defense of straight white men is immediately shot down. With even more articles and more media personalities doubling down on the negative anti-white male rhetoric. Just like when Joe Rogan made his comments, and even more recently when Candace Owens made her own statements on the issue. Actually, and I will stand by this as much as I possibly can and I will be the loudest voice, the actually worst thing to be in this society, if one thing I would not want to be, is a straight white male. For some reason that's considered problematic, right? You have to be something. That's why people lie. They're lying on college applications. They're like, okay, I'm white, uh, but I'm also trans. And you're like, what? Why are you pretending? It's because, oh, I don't want people to think I'm too normal, right? And people, you know, they're just trying to find something that makes them not white. Some may turn their nose up at this, but some of what she expressed here is actually correct. In mid-2022, Ted Cruz even called out the State Department for discriminating against people with disabilities and straight white men in their hiring practices. The email says that hiring practices have developed inside the State Department so that, and I'll quote, that certain candidates could not be hired because they have a disability. They are white men. They are straight white men. They are not of the, quote, right religion. All of these are verbatim quotes from the email of a senior State Department official. In response to the defense of straight white men, the arguments are often the same. Some people believe that the criticism of straight white men is justified because they have historically held a disproportionate amount of power and privilege. Before I came out as a trans woman, I presented to the world as a white cis hetero male. While I experienced a lot of privilege, I want to tell you that it wasn't always easy. For example, you have to learn to develop really good balance because it's easy to get tripped up when you're walking across the backs of everyone else. Also, I struggled to understand how doors work because they always seemed open for me no matter where I went. And last, it can be very drying on your skin when you're constantly having the wind blowing at your back. I guess what I'm trying to say is, before you judge white, cis, hetero males, walk a mile in their shoes. Their sweet, comfy, cushy shoes. My friend, I'm gonna need to stop you there. Don't do it, Sydney. You are appropriating an entire sex of women, of females. I don't know what's more privileged than that. There is also the belief that straight white men are one of the most prominent groups in Western countries, and as such cannot be the subjects of discrimination because they control everything. 
I think. And if they are the subjects of any kind of negative bias, or if they appear to be, this is only because societal institutions, hiring processes, governments, and so on, are making room for diversity by giving opportunities to women, LGBTQIA, XYZ people, non-whites, and anyone who has historically been held back by the aforementioned white men. The belief persists that being a straight white man is the most easy, and more importantly, the most privileged. One salon article actually went as far as to say that to be white is to have access to unearned advantages in almost every arena of American society and throughout the world. Something I personally find so sad about all of this is that it dismisses the experience of an entire group of people all of whom are individuals with very different life experiences. It's also just awful to be socialized from any age to believe that traits over which you have absolutely no control mean that you're inherently bad or negative or toxic and so on. I've always said, and I continue to maintain, it's not right to do this to anyone. Nobody should be made to feel lesser for their immutable characteristics. Unless, of course, you're one of those people who argues that asexual attraction to children is an immutable characteristic. In which case, get in the sea. Now, all of this said, in researching this topic, I did come across an article, written funnily enough by a democratic immigrant woman, who expressed something I think is worth repeating. One can have historical and contemporary awareness for inequities and injustices without having hateful feelings towards the ordinary white citizens around us. Today's democratic party is predicated on having and expressing open hostility towards white citizens. They are making the dangerous bet that most minorities and immigrants will jump on the white male bashing bandwagon. But it could backfire and turn off many voters. If you ask most minorities and immigrants, they'll probably tell you they just want a fair equal shot at the American dream, and that they're not angling for racial payback or Civil War take two. I think in many ways, her assessment is more than likely correct. The reality is that so much of modern politics is fractured around sex and race. And in fact, some would argue that race relations have never been worse, and that's a direct product of the media we consume. If you go online, watch TV, a movie, listen to politicians, even pundits, you're bombarded with messaging about white supremacy, that straight white men and white people generally are ground zero for inequality, for racism, for societal problems. This culty worldview, this philosophy, has made its way into the education system, into teaching, it's made its way into the corporate world, into government, into so many of our societal institutions, including the media. And it is as divisive as it gets. Demonizing straight white men forces us into a culture of division and polarization. It beats men down and makes discrimination justifiable and makes us wary of one another. Not only that, but when we divide people into groups and endlessly assign blame to one of those groups for no observable logical reason, we destroy any opportunity we have of banding together to address actual serious societal issues. There is one last thing that I would like to note here, and I'm gonna need you all to cast your minds back to the beginning of this video with the clips that we were watching of the white people hating on other white people. I know it's trendy to express these ideas, and I also know that a lot of white individuals don't actually view themselves through a racial lens. But when they express these kinds of ideas, there's no pushback, there's no response, there's no negative societal implication from saying what they said. But these people, in their criticisms of straight white men, are inadvertently, actually it's not even inadvertent, it's, it's, it's very obvious, they are very obviously attacking their fathers, their brothers, their uncles, their husbands, their boyfriends, any man in their life who happens to be straight and white and male. Which is self-evident when I say any man in their life, you understood that. And in my opinion, in addition to just being embarrassing, I, like, I, don't, under, I don't understand the self-flagellation thing, it's, it's very odd. Uh, it's also just really weird to consider. You know, I spent some time reading through the comments uh, on videos responding to that video, and a majority of people actually writing comments seem to be not white. And a lot of them said that you would just never find this sort of thing happening in other ethnic groups. 
So that, I don't know, you, did, you make something of that. In the end, demonizing straight white men, as we so often see all the time, is ironically against the very value system that progressives like to tell you about all the time. But let's be real. It isn't actually an answer to historical inequalities. It isn't even an answer to current social problems. It's just divisive, it's gross, and it's unhelpful. I do have more to say about this topic in more detail, but I would like to cover the rest of that in another video at a later date. Now, before I open the floor to all of you, this is just a reminder to check out Exto using the link in the description. When you do and you use my code, you'll get 25% off at checkout. Now, open the floor to all of you. What do you all think? Is the demonization of straight white men actually happening? Do you think that I am a crazy Looney Tune person who is just misreading all of this? Do you think it is going on and it's a bad thing and it's a negative thing for society? Do you think that this is very divisive, that it's actually breaking us up further into groups that we don't need to be broken up into? Do you think that the media and the governments and politicians and so on are complicit in this? And what do you generally make of this issue overall? As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe the thumbs up button if you want to leave a comment for free to do so just be respectful about it and i will see you guys next time